Hey y'all, Jill here and welcome back to Whispering Willow Farm. Today we are going to talk all about selling plants for profit, what you need to know. This is something every year without fail I get a flood of questions about and I always like to do a detailed video going in depth on this. I've been selling plants for over six years now and so although I'm not, you know, the end all be all, uh, I do have a few tricks up my sleeve and I have learned uh, some of the things that really make this a successful adventure for our family and our farm. So before I dive into the nitty gritty of selling plant starts for profit, I wanted to let you guys know about a plant sale that I am participating in this year for the fifth year in a row, and that is the Bell Urban Farm plant sale. I'm gonna throw an infographic up here so you guys can screenshot it. Now I know not all of you are local to me, but I would absolutely love it if you guys put it on your calendars and came into town for this event because not only am I going to be selling plant starts there uh, this year, I am also going to be signing my book, The Tiny But Mighty Farm. So I would love to hug your guys' neck, sign your book, and share a little piece of my town with you through the Bell Urban Farm plant sale. This year it is actually going to be at Bell Urban Farm and so you can tour their farm stand with a lot of stuff in there supplied by my family and our farm, which is really kind of cool. So I'm going to put the information for that down below and everything I mentioned in today's video, there will be a link for down in the description below. There's going to be a lot of information. So I do encourage you guys, pause me right now, go grab a pen, a notepad, maybe your iPad, maybe your phone, whatever your speed is, because I'm going to be shooting out a lot of information in hopes to set you guys up for the best success. If you have been thinking about selling plants, um, you know, from your farm, your gardens, or maybe even just your home this year. So I'll start out by saying, this is one of my favorite topics to teach on because it's one of those that you can be implementing no matter what scale you are at. If you are just a hobbyist backyard grower and you wanna grow a couple plants to sell to your friends and family, guess what, you can do it. <laughs> if you are doing this for your job and you wanna grow a ton of plants for your community, guess what, you can do it. Um, it doesn't matter what scale you're at, you can be growing plants to sell. Now you do need to know how to start seeds. So if you are maybe a beginner gardener who's never grown seeds before, you might want to have a few seasons under your belt uh, just so you feel confident enough and that you're giving a good product to your customer. But it doesn't matter whether you're the hobbyist, whether you do this as a career, this is applicable to anyone who wants to bring in extra revenue for their farm or maybe just offset some of those input costs to begin with. So I pulled my Instagram a few days ago and asked them to submit all of their questions about uh, growing plants to sell and boy oh boy were there a lot of them. So today we're going to be hitting on price, pot, soil, what to grow, how to label, permits and certificates, when to start, best places to sell, how do you accept payments, and staying organized. So like I mentioned this one is jam-packed so I hope you guys got your coffee <laughs> and you're ready to hang out with me. Um, so first of all we're going to dive into price. How do you know how to price your seedling? Now now, I'm in Arkansas. The prices we pay for plants here are vastly different than other places in this world. I know when I was visiting my friend in California, her plant prices were double if not triple what we were paying here. So I can't tell you what my price point is, I will tell you. But I can tell you what I do. I've done this every single year since I have been selling plants and it has proven um, to work in my favor. And that is go to the stores and figure out what they are charging. I like to go to a few different stores. So I'll go to a Lowe's, a Home Depot, a Farmer's Co-op, and then I'll go to a nursery. Now, usually the nursery is always gonna charge more because they always have a few um, more varieties than are available at Lowe's or Home Depot, right? They're just getting those bonnie plants in. Same with our Farmer's Co-op. There's usually only a couple varieties, nothing special, and they all have the same. So I will take my phone and just start a note and I'll say single pack, you know, in a four inch pot of a tomato for an organic, because that is how I am growing. Um, we're certified naturally grown now. <laughs> Yay, we finally got our certificate done. And so I can charge um, that higher price point, which that might be something I hit on in a minute and talk to you guys about. And I'll jot down, it's $8 for a tomato plant. 
or six dollars or you know whatever that price might be and then I'll go to the nursery and I'll figure that out and I'll look at a price of flowers that's a six pack maybe I'll look at a six pack of cucumbers and I'll figure out what their price is and I'll come back and figure out what my inputs are if you are not charging enough to cover your cost of inputs then obviously it is not worth it so I do of course have a spreadsheet and I put what my cost of soil was what my cost of seed was and also my cost of pots now I do like to also calculate time which is why we are growing a large volume because that's really where I can make up some of this revenue is by the bulk amount that I'm growing I'm getting a discount when I'm buying bulk soil I'm getting a discount when I'm buying bulk seed and so for me that's how I kind of try to make up costs there but I will figure out what they're charging, what the customer and the consumer is used to paying as well. So let's say if they go to you know a Lowe's and they can buy a tomato plant and you're charging $5 more, they're gonna have a hard time justifying that. Now I think most of the customers who are shopping at a farmer's market are aware that they're gonna get some of the same produce that they'll buy at the grocery store and they're gonna pay more because they're able to buy it from the farmer. So this does come into play as well. You can charge more because it's being grown locally from someone that they know and trust. So don't think that you can't charge for that because you can. I'm just saying maybe you don't charge, you know, $5 extra <laughs> than what they're doing. And so for me, for the last few years, we've done you know, a tomato plant for $6, our six packs for $6. As prices continue to increase, we have upped our prices a little bit and we haven't really had an issue. But this year we're gonna be pricing our six, pla six pack flowers for $6, our tomato plants for $6. Um, and that's what works well for us in our area. That's the price that I've done uh, for the last few years now and it's worked well. Um, we are like I mentioned, certified naturally grown this year. So we can actually charge more because it is like having that organic certification. They know that there were standards and requirements. And so if this is something that you're wanting to be a lucrative part of your farm, it's a really easy process, in my opinion, um, to become certified naturally grown. And then you do have that accreditation behind your farm, which just you know builds trust with your customer and consumer. So for the pricing, I recommend Take <laughs> take a shopping day, go take your phone and a notebook and figure out what are comparable prices in your area for your market. Next up, we are gonna talk all about pots. This is also a frequently asked question. Now, I'm going to probably say some things that some of you guys may not like, okay? So don't hate me. But for our plant sale, we actually have stipulations, guidelines, if you will, where we cannot sell in a red solo cup or a recycled yogurt container or something like that. Now, trust me, I'm the first for reducing, reusing, and recycling, all right? So if you are just growing plants for yourself, I think this is probably a fine option. Maybe even if you have a friend or a family member who is asking you, hey, can I pay you to start me three or five tomato plants? and you've got red solo cups hanging around or maybe a yogurt container, sure, use them all day long. But if you're wanting to sell plants for profit, you're wanting to position yourself as an expert, you're wanting this to bring in lucrative income, then you're gonna have to treat it as such. And which means there has to be this level of professionalism. If you went to that nursery and they were trying to sell you, you know, a seven, eight dollar plant in a recycled yogurt container, like me, I would probably all be all for that and be like, way to go. Like, I appreciate you guys are using but to the average Joe they're not going to appreciate that and they're probably going to be upset that you're charging me this much and you used it in a recycled yogurt container and so pots do make a difference because you are kind of posing yourself as a professional and so there are a few different options at various different price ranges so when I started out I was using those red solo cups. Um, I was overusing soil. They would break down really, really easily and they didn't hold up. So I really don't think that that is a great option. Um, but then I would buy these pots right here. This is a five inch pot, which I think is too big. Um, this is from Greenhouse Megastore. It's not great plastic. It is gonna break down over time, but it is a cheap option where you can buy in bulk. And so they've got these three and a half inch um, deep pots that I really uh, liked for tomatoes and peppers and you weren't overusing soil, but it was a good sturdy affordable price point. So something like this, um, you could easily put a label on it if you wanted, like your logo or something like that. You could take a chalk marker and write the variety, which we'll talk more about that when it comes to labeling. Um, but for the price point, I think that a pot similar to this um, is 
a really affordable option. I'm gonna leave the links down below for you. All right, so the next option would be these two and a half inch pots from Bootstrap Farmer. Um, this is actually what I am selling my tomatoes and my peppers in. So these are a cost investment, and I know many of you might be thinking, why on earth are you selling your Bootstrap Farmer trays? And really, because my goal behind selling plants isn't to bring in a dollar amount. Um, that is a perk <laughs> and it is nice, but for me, I want to inspire people, individuals to become gardeners and want to grow their own foods and start their own gardens. And so for me, if I can start them in these pots, they can buy them, I can tell them that they can reuse them and they can even start their own seed next year. For me, that might be what takes that one person's curiosity to grow a garden and makes them into a gardener if they feel like they might have some of the tools already provided for them. So I recognize that this is probably not a good option for most people, but for us, um, there was more behind it than just selling the plant, right? It's trying to spark the curiosity and spark that just desire for people to wanna grow food and set them up the best way possible. And so this is what we're gonna be using this year um, for some of our single plants. And then what we're using for our cucumbers and our flowers are these compostable pots from Johnny's. You can also buy these in bulk. They're there are a few pros and cons to these. These are more expensive than the plastic ones, but it is more environmentally friendly. A lot of people like that. You can plant this directly in your garden and it will break down over time um, and it is biodegradable one of, which is a perk, <laughs> you can charge for that perk. One of the downfalls is that they are going to dry out and you are gonna have to water them more often and you wanna have a good system in place for transporting them if you are not selling on your farm because if you uh, water them you know, really well before you're moving them to your plant cell, um, they might fall apart, they might break apart. So I would say if you are choosing to use this option, make sure you kind of let them dry out before transporting uh, just so that they are easily transported and won't break down on you. And so those are a few of my favorite options um, when it comes to what pots to use. Again, knowing do you, you know, sell it in a single pot or a six pack, what are people used to buying? Most people are not buying a six pack of tomatoes, so we do all of those in singles, same with our peppers. But a lot of times you will find your squash, your lettuce, or your cucumbers, even your flowers in six packs. So those are the things that we choose to grow in our six packs versus these single pots. All right, now let's talk about soil. When it comes to selling your plants, soil is important because if you don't have good soil, you're not gonna have good plant starts and then there's nothing to sell. So this is one of those things you can either make your own mix, which could be a peat, perlite, um, you know, vermiculite, we do azomite, we do some agri-grow ultra, we kind of just make our own with different components and add those amendments in, but you just want to make sure that you've got a good quality soil that you're starting with. If you are using a seed starting mix without any nutrients and you've started some of these tomatoes like 12 weeks before you intend to sell them, you might notice that they're getting a bit deficient. And obviously you're going to want to address this before you sell a plant that is, you know, yellow and show signs of a nitrogen deficiency. So make sure you either have quality uh, potting mix that has that fertilizer already in it or that you are adding those amendments as you see that your plants need them. Another really important thing when it comes to selling plants for profit is knowing how to properly label them. Now this is something that might get overlooked, but it is actually really important. There's a few things you can do and I've pretty much done them all. <laughs> um, but one, you can use these little plastic markers, which, you know, can be all right if you're only selling a few. If you are starting thousands of these and you plan on handwriting them, that can really eat into your time, which is going to lower your cost if you're paying yourself for this. Um, and so you could, if you had some sort of label maker and, you know, you could print them off and stick them on there, which would be a pretty good option. Um, you can actually, too, just take like a painter's tape and put some sort of tape on here on the back side and write what it is. I have seen people use popsicle sticks and write with a marker, um, which I do kind of like the aesthetic of that because again, it can be composted and if that's kind of the route that you're going is you're wanting to, you know, create a plant start with 
low environmental cost. Um, I think that the uh, popsicle stick works great. You can also too just take a chalk marker and write directly on your pots, but you do want to make sure that they are properly labeled that way that your customer knows what they are getting. One of the things I found that I do not like about these plastic containers is that our plant cell is not at our farm. And so by the time these plants get loaded up in a trailer, we've drove 30 minutes to get there, I get there most of the time, some of these are missing and I have no idea what variety you know, I have of tomato or maybe of flour. And then what happens, I ended up not being able to sell that because I can't guarantee what it is. So labeling is important to sell. Another thing that I do that is pretty minimal cost but I have found is really, really effective is I have these little plant tags made up at our local Conway Copies and they are laminated. And so what I do is I have, I make these in Canva. I have the variety up here. I have a description of them and then I have a picture of them. And what's nice about this is if you are growing some of those heirloom varieties that you know most of the customers that are buying from you are not used to seeing in the store, they can see exactly what it looks like and they can say, ah, oh, you know what, I actually would really like to grow this. And then if you have a lot of plants or maybe you have a really large sale and you're not able to talk to each individual um, and they're asking well what about this giant marigold or what does a fireball uh, zidia blend actually look like you you know they can see it here and that was something I learned in the beginning because I was growing a lot of varieties that only I knew about that variety and so people were waiting in line to talk to me um, and no one else knew anything about it which resulted in people just not buying from me right they didn't want to wait 20 minutes to ask me a question about a tomato and so getting these printed out with just a picture the variety and some of just the basic specs about it I find is super super um, lucrative and just it's nice because now I usually always grow the same varieties <laughs> and I can just use this year after year you can tape it down on the tables which is what we do we'll have stacks of plant and then we'll have you know the description of that taped down at the bottom so as they are shopping they get a visual and they can see and you would be surprised how much this little bitty you know infographic card here will encourage people to buy because they can see it and they think it's pretty and then they they realize that they want that in their garden and so I find that this is one of those labeling things that definitely pays off in the long run. Now we're going to move on to permits and certificates. I get asked about this all the time when it comes to selling plant starts and this is something that I encourage you guys to reach out to your local extension office and ask them what is the standard what is the law um, about this you know we have got another farm that is hosting all of this we do have to pay a tax on the products that are sold while we are there but we are able to legally sell the plants and not have a permit um, however that is state law and state regulation for me here in Arkansas yours might be different and so what I would encourage you guys to do before you ever start your plants to sell them is make sure you know what the requirements are by you um, from your states and your cities and the best way to do that is just to call your local extension office they will more than likely have the answers for you now we jump into when to start plants if you're wanting to sell plants you have to know when to start them so you're going to need to figure out when that estimated last frost is for you gather the seeds that you're wanting to start and then figure out when you need to be starting them now the great thing about selling your own plant starts is when all the plants are sold at the store you can still be doing this so so we will sell plants in the spring and in the fall because we are growing you know food year-round here which some places you can't actually buy starts in the fall so you might find that you have a better time you know selling your plant starts in the fall because no there's no other competitor from a big box store um, but as far as knowing when to start your seeds that is all going to still be the same that information on the back of your seed packet um, understanding when your estimated last frost is you don't want to start anything too soon to where it's too big that is something I tell people you know bigger doesn't equal better. In my experience, I've found that at these plant cells, you know, 
most of us farmers, we don't have the biggest plants. <laughs> um, we're not using any sort of like synthetic fertilizer or anything like that. And so yes, our plants are beautiful. And that's really the goal. Your goal isn't to grow the biggest plant start. Your goal is to grow a healthy plant start and build trust with your customer that it's gonna produce abundantly for them. And so I found bigger doesn't equal butter. You wanna make sure that you have got quality over quantity when it comes to your little seedlings. And so I usually, whenever you know, it says I should be starting, I give myself about a window um, because more than likely you're still gonna have a cold snap, at least for us here. And so even though we might be cleared of our last frost, a lot of people still might be waiting a week or two before they actually plan on putting them out into their garden. So that is something to consider um, if you are planning some sort of plant cell, which we'll jump into next. Um, it's not very likely that they're gonna be buying the plants the same day that they are transplanting them out into the ground. And so that leads me to where's the best place to sell your plants to bring in revenue. So if you have a farm where you are comfortable with advertising and letting locals come there, that's gonna be the easiest thing because you're not transporting, you can set it up on your own time, you can be within the comfort of your own home. And so if that is what you plan on doing, I encourage that you use platforms like YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, maybe you have a newsletter, um, and you advertise that and you say on this day, between this time and this time, you can come to the farm for our plant sale. Um, that's what I recommend because that's where you're going to get the most money because you're not having to drive anywhere. Like I mentioned, you don't have your time loading up plants, being somewhere else uh, for several hours of the day. However, if you do not have that and you've got a farm like I do that, you know, throws an annual plant sale, ask to be a vendor and participate in that because it's really not, in my opinion, a great idea to list your plants um, online, let's say a Facebook marketplace. I'm not even sure if you can do that anymore because you're gonna have people messaging you at all different times. You're gonna have random people who wanna come to your house at all different times. And then you're really gonna get yourself tied up all day just trying to meet the needs of these people versus having a set time and a set date that they can come. And ideally you're selling all your plants at once and then whatever's left over you can choose to give away. Or maybe that's when you say, hey, I've got a few plants left over. If someone wants to come and snag them, let me know. And so for me, know your market, know which way you're wanting to sell. Maybe you've got a booth at the farmer's market and you wanna take some of these there. I would just try to figure out what's the best way to move the most plants at one time. And I think either hosting your own plant cell or participating in a plant sale is gonna be the best way to do this. Now we're gonna talk about how to accept payments and stay organized. I find that the way to be successful selling plant starts is to make it an easy purchase. When someone goes to the store, it's convenient, right? They've got their plant right there, they have a cashier checking them out, whether they wanna pay a cash check, debit card, um, whatever, and so for me, I, I want people to want to buy from me. I want this to be an easy experience for them. I want them this to be a comfortable experience for them. And how I do that is making things as convenient for them to purchase and buy as possible. And so we do Shopify, which is who what our website is through. And so we have one of those little card readers that we take with us. And I will put all my plants into Shopify beforehand. Now there's a couple ways you can break this down. When I was first starting out, I wanted to be very specific and I wanted to know what varieties were selling best. So if you don't have a Shopify, you can do this with PayPal. There's a lot of different other um, platforms you can do this with, uh, depending on what you're comfortable with. But I would go in and I would put each variety that I was selling. That way I would know specifically what sold best. I could look back over the day and I could say, I sold 100 Dr. Witchies and I only sold 10 German Johnsons. Well, that tells me next year I need to probably grow more Dr. Witchies and less German Johnsons. But as uh, the plant cell has grown and more hundreds and hundreds, last year we even had thousands of people, that becomes pretty tedious to go through that item list, that item catalog and pick them. So now I'm pretty set in what I'm growing. And so I'll just put single, a tomato, single pepper, six pack of flour, six pack of vegetables, and I'll put the price in. And that way I can still see quantity. I just won't know variety specific, but I do find you can get pretty organized there on the back end if you are trying to hone in what to grow um, for future years. 
So we do accept all different cards and cash. We just start out with a certain amount. We personally do not accept check. So that is something that, that would just kind of be your uh, comfort level on if you knew that person or not. But if you are participating in a big plant sale, um, just making sure that you also have card, cash. We even do Venmo and Cash App. So we try to make it as easy on the customer as possible. However they want to pay, that's how we want to be able to accept payment because we want it to be easy for them. But ultimately, to be successful selling plants, starts you just have to start and you have to build that trust with your customers I have folks in my community who have been buying plants for me for six years and they come to this plant sell every year to buy from me and it means something to them it's special we've built relationships and so really you need to have a good system in place you need to start with quality pots quality seeds quality soil but you really just need to work on building a relationship with your community to where they can trust that you're going to provide them with a plant that's going to do really well Next, let's talk about variety, knowing what to grow. Now, uh, when I was starting out, like I mentioned, I grew a lot of variety, which ended up biting me in the foot because I was the only one who knew about these different varieties and it overwhelmed my customer. Just like if you were to go to the store and you saw a thousand options you might get overwhelmed and you might just say you know what i'm gonna walk away and i'm gonna come back later and i'll make a decision and the reality is you're probably not going to come back later and make a decision you're going to go and purchase from someone else who has laid out fewer options and made it easier for you to purchase so one thing i recommend when choosing your varieties when laying out your booth when getting everything ready for selling your plant starts view it as you being the customer what would make you want to purchase? What would be a good experience for you? And you try to provide that for your customer. And so for me, I have learned <laughs> less is more. I do not offer 60 different varieties of tomatoes. We offer a couple hybrid, a couple heirlooms. Um, I do find that it is good to offer diversity because that is appealing if they can buy something from you that they do not have access to in the store, but just limit those, right? So I do like to throw in those fun, few variety of tomatoes that people are not able to buy from the grocery store but when it comes to flowers we're doing things that are familiar we're doing zinnias we're doing nasturtiums we're doing sunflowers some common things that people can relate to and they have a picture in their head of what it looks like um, and so I do encourage you guys when you are choosing your varieties find majority that are familiar and then maybe sprinkle in a few uh, that are just for fun you guys I hope this video on selling plant starts what you need to know you found helpful from pots to soil to labeling for knowing your market how to sell them varieties I know this was a lot of information thrown at you guys so if you have more questions feel free to leave them down in the comments and we will be sure to answer them and of course don't forget I would love it if you guys join me for the Bell Urban Farm plant sale this year on April 16th at Bell Urban Farm I'm gonna put a graphic up once this video ends but thank you all for hanging out with me I'll talk to you soon